Hello guys and welcome back to another video here on So That's Gaming. Today, decided we're going to go ahead and mod chip our, uh, well my, <laughs> Nintendo GameCube. Let's roll the intro and we'll get started. All right, guys, so like I said, I got my Orange Spice GameCube here. We're gonna go ahead and install a mod chip in this bad boy, but we're not just gonna do any mod chip. We're not gonna do the GC loader where it replaces the disk drive or any of the other crazy mod chips. Instead, we're gonna save quite a bit of money. We're gonna use a $4 Raspberry Pi Pico. Seven dollars, eight dollars, depending on where you're able to get it, depending on you know the supply chain issues at any given time. So things you'll need, obviously, you'll need a Nintendo GameCube. I, the um, the orange spice one that I have is a DOL 001. Uh, you can do this with the was it 101, but. I will not be showing how to do that because I don't have that one. So I'm sure there's resources online you can use to find that out. So other than a Raspberry Pi Pico, a couple things you're gonna need. Obviously you're gonna need some way of loading up Swiss. Uh, well, you need a SD card to put your games and load Swiss onto. Another thing you'll need is an adapter. Now, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You can use the GC to uh, SD card. So uh, it just plugs into your one of your memory card slots with a micro SD card adapter. You can use one of these bad boys. These are all over Amazon. You can get them for like five, six bucks. And so it plugs into the serial port two on the bottom of the console. And we'll show you that here. Got the cover already taken off. So you have the game key. Oops. The GameCube player plugs into here, and then the broadband adapter would go in here, which they're supposed to be making an M.2 loader for this, which I'm looking forward to checking out, but it's not out yet. If it is, I missed it. But this guy right here was never really used for anything. This is serial port two. So that's where this guy comes in. You have the SD card plugs into right there. Let's focus. Well, and then it's got idiot proof this side out so that means you take this plug that in right here just like so with those words facing outside another option you can do if you are using the game boy player attachment obviously if you ever want to update your games you don't have to take it off every time and well there's the sd to sb2 pro adapter now it's kind of the same thing and this is a, kind of a snug fit. It fits in there, but I think on mine, I got to shave it, maybe get a file or sandpaper and sand it down, but it interferes with the broadband adapter cover. But um, right as of right now, that is what it is. So let's, let me go ahead and take this cover off that way you can see how it sits. But yep, there you are. It plugs in just right there and it's, and it's, fits in there tight very very tight clearances tolerances but it makes it to where you can get access to your micro sd card all without having to detach your game boy player so um yeah i just gotta do a little bit of modification on the back side to get to work but right now i don't have a game boy player so i have no reason to use this at the moment so i'll be using either the sd memory card adapter or the sp2 adapter the original so let's go and i'm not going to show you through the whole soldering thing there's plenty of tutorials out there but i'll go and get this thing wired up and we'll show you what it looks like after it's all soldered up and then well we're gonna need some software we're gonna need to get pico boot and we're gonna have to get swiss and so all the links for those will be in the description so let's get started all right, so we're over here at the computer. We're gonna have to download a few files, but in addition to that, one of the things you're gonna have to do is to get your Pico ready to 
uh, to write the software to. So if you look right here, there's a boot button. What you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to hold that button at the same time that you plug in your uh, cable here. And uh, it helps if you grab the right cable. So let me go find the right cable right back. All right, now that I got the right cable. Now, the one on AliExpress, I'll include a link to that as well. That way it kind of gives you the, the full kit. That way you have everything you need. But like I said, um, you'll hold down the boot button and then you'll plug in the USB. Let's go to the computer and we'll show you what that looks like. There's nothing here, right? So I'm just gonna hold the boot button and then I'm gonna plug it in and then it'll open up a new drive. All the thing you're gonna do here is you're gonna download Pico Boot from the GitHub. And all you're gonna do is take this and drag it and drop it on there. Now I've already done this over the previous um, Pico that I'm recording all this out of order, but <laughs> I've already done this on a different on a different Pico device, so I'm not gonna write to this one yet because I'm pretty sure I can rewrite it, but so and that's it. You'll drag and drop it. Once it gets done copying, it will automatically disconnect from your computer and then it'll have a green light on the Pico let you know that it's flashed successfully. Now let's go take a look where we're gonna get these files. Let's go ahead and move this out of the way. So we showed you how to flash. So this is Pico Boot. This is uh, the main page on the GitHub where you'll be able to get your files. The links will be in the description. It has links to the guides and everything else, which is a great resource. But if you go over here to the right where it says Pico Boot under releases, you can click that and you just download the Pico Boot full.uft or uf2, sorry. So uh, another resource to help follow along is this installation guide, which will take you to here to Web HDX's page. <laughs> Tells you everything that you'll need to do, including the pictures and what wires need to be soldered, the whole nine yards. If you're using a flex ribbon cable available from AliExpress, that works too. And I think he mentions it as well. Here we are. Let's go and check this out. We'll take you to that listing. We'll show you what they're talking about. Here you go. Here's a here's a flex ribbon cable that you can use to uh make the installation easier there's other options and i will include the one in, that i got in the description this is the pico that i got it's not micro usb this one is usb type c so this is the one i got it includes the pico includes the ribbon cable it even includes new thermal pads so in case you tear yours apart in the process of breaking down your gamecube to install this and so that's the installation guide real handy and then another thing we're going to need is Swiss. So again, go to the, re the releases, download Swiss.7-zip. Um, this other program here, the NKIT, in some cases, um, depending on how you've backed up your GameCube ISOs in the past, it can compress them. For example, like Animal Crossings, like when it's compressed, is like less than 32 megabytes. <laughs> So, but it's designed to be on a full 1.4 gig disc. So, um, I tried it and unfortunately Swiss is not compatible with compressed ISO. So that is where that would come into handy. It includes software that allows you to expand them before putting them on your SD card. So all really self-explanatory, but once you download Swiss, let's get over here. It'll, you'll extract it, and these are all the files that you will see in here. You ignore all this crap. So we're going to go up here to the DOL, and we're going to copy this Swiss underscore R1712. Your version might differ, but you're going to copy this to the root of your SD card that you're using for your Pico Boot. You'll need to rename this to IPL initial program load dot dol in order for it to launch correctly so after all that go ahead and get your uh your gamecube broke down get your ribbon and your wires or whatever method you're choosing to use all soldered up you can use the guides to figure out which points i'm not going to show you that because you don't need to see a surgeon that's uh suffering cocaine withdrawal sitting there shaking trying to solder i mean i can solder but i'm not 
super steady. So, so it's a wonder I got it done in the first place. So, but yeah, we'll get these files. You'll put them on the SD card, flash your Pi, solder, together, solder it, put together, and you're off to the races. So let me show you what it looks like when it's all get done, done being soldered, and we'll go from there. Ooh, with the magic of, you know, cinema magic, you know, we're suddenly inside the GameCube. Now, I'm not going to go ahead and show you the whole soldering method, because I'm sure the last thing that any of you would want to see is to see me trying to solder as if I'm a highly calculated surgeon that's running on crack withdrawals. I don't know. <laughs> These aren't exactly the steadiest hands, but so here is the peekaboo flex ribbon right here. Let's see how good we got. So there's four connections that need to be made here. It doesn't need to look pretty. It just needs to make a connection. And so there are four spots on the top and these two spots on the bottom and so on the, on the back side of the flex cable here's our Pico boot this one came from Aliexpress and you can use a regular you know Pico boot but there's just a couple spots here at the top one at the bottom one on this side and these five now I don't know if all five of these are actually required or if some of them are really meant to help anchor this. I went ahead and decided to add a little small dab on the ground as well. But um, it's all connected. If you have uh, uh, Tapcom cape tape, it would be probably a good idea to put over that just in case any of your solders um, are too big and they make contact with the heat sink above. Um, most of my pads are mostly intact. I think I'm going to go and leave it the way it is. I might press some of this in so it'll re-squish or whatever, but I think we're good. If I have any thermal problems, I'll open it back up and we'll replace the thermal pads. But um, that's it. So let's go ahead and put this thing back together and we'll show you what we got. All right. So at this point, we have everything put back together for the most part. You can see the GameCube is mostly put together. Uh, I've seen a lot of other tutorials where people will just go and put it completely back together and without even testing it so i decided just to put up bare minimum you know the controller ports the drive fan all that stuff to put it mostly together to see if it well make sure it works because we don't want to put it completely back together to find out whether to tear it all the way apart to fix a bad solder joint or something so let's go ahead and switch to that input here we are says no signal we're powering up and that is a lot faster than I thought it would be. So you can see we have a couple of games here that are all loaded up. And you'll need to have, like I said, the IPL at the root of the folder. That stands for Initial Program Load or Launch. It's basically it's where it, it, um, uh, it intersects the, I guess, BIOS, basically. It says, hey, we're going to load this one instead. So, but... Um, yeah, so it looks like it's working. So we're gonna go and power this down, put this all together, and we're gonna run it through its paces and test some things out. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and put this bad boy back together. All right, we're finalizing the assembly here, and this is about the best place you can put this guy. I'm thinking I might add another piece of tape right over the top of that screw to keep it from making any kind of contact. But you can see that the flex cable is flexible flexible enough for it to curve up around there. I just put a piece of tape, curled it over itself to make kind of a double stick tape to kind of stick it there because I'm not planning on really, you know, well, juggling the GameCube to make this thing come loose, but um, obviously you can use something more of a 3M shrimp if you want, but I didn't like the idea of doing that because if I ever have to unmount it for whatever reason, you... I'd be worried about tearing the traces off the back of that flex rib cable or breaking it or, or something. So I decided just to use some regular tape. So I'm just going to throw a piece of tape uh, over the top of this right here just to make sure that if it does come loose, none of these contacts get grounded or shorted by that screw right there. And I'm just going to put the rest of it together. 
All right, we're all buttoned back together. Now, previously I mentioned you can use one of three different methods of using your SD cards. And for the sake of some simplicity, I wanna go ahead and use the GameCube to SD card adapter. This plugs into the memory card port. It doesn't matter which port you can go on. You can go onto memory port one or memory port two. It, excuse me, it doesn't matter. So um, we're just gonna put it in port two because if you have a memory card that actually has your save games, you can put that in port one, no big deal. So it's put together. Um, be careful when you're putting the lid back on if you are using the flex cable method or even if you're using the five wire method as you know, whichever works for you. Uh, you don't, be careful you don't like, it catches on the lid a little bit. So it's a little snug. So let's go and put this in slot two here. We're all hooked up, good to go. Make sure that we didn't mess anything up in the process of putting the lid back on. Let's go ahead and switch over here and we're gonna power it on. God, it's, it, it's quick. Now, it is a little bit slower than the first time we tested it, only because I was using serial port two. I'm wondering if that plays a part in how quickly, but these are just a couple of the games I had that I had ripped, backed up, and put on my SD card. Now, some of these I had compressed images, and that's where the end kit uh, converter comes in handy because those are compressed images and Swiss doesn't support that. But it's going to fire up Luigi's Mansion here. And everything should work just as it's supposed to for the most part. <laughs> there you are, Nintendo. Yeah, we're going to use progressive scan mode. And so here we are. All loaded up. Let's make sure. Controls are all set up here. Now there's not gonna be any sound because mm, my capture card doesn't want to capture sound for some reason, but hopefully the mic is working. All right, so yeah, um, it's been a long since I played this, so you can't change the camera angle, but yeah, so this works. Now I'm trying to find a setting. I think there's a setting where the reset button will take you back to the loader, but right now it just takes you back to the home screen. It is what it is, but there you go. Pico boot. All you needed was a Raspberry Pi Pico and some wire or a flex ribbon cable, some soldering skill, a little patience, a couple downloads. And all in all, the whole project, if, if you are proficient at soldering, the whole thing can be done in about 20, 30 minutes, depending on how good you are at soldering. So yeah, let's get your Pico out, get it flashed, let's rock and roll. So thanks again for watching. If you enjoy this content, be sure to let me know in the comment section below what you thought, what ideas for projects in the future you think I should do. You know, like, comment, subscribe, bell icon, all that good stuff. And we'll see you guys next time. Keep on gaming guys, later.